Hello, hello. Happy Thursday. So I made a post earlier today about raising the standards, how to raise standards, why you need to raise standards, uh, why it's important to, what to expect kind of thing. A little bit about what I was talking about. Hi, Mary. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about like how to do that. How, how, like we know we should raise the bar. We talk about how everybody has more potential. Um, that how for me, like I have, re I've realized recently and a lot of what's been happening um, over the past <laughs> six months of our crazy ass year, is I've been really looking at now that we're like six months in and we kind of have this bigger data set, let's say, of like things that have happened and occurred, I've been really looking for that common thread of like what's happening in my life and what's being asked of me and where I'm being asked to grow, which is something I work with my clients on all the time. It's an excellent practice to have. So what I've noticed is a lot of what has been presented to me are spaces and places in my life, in relationships, in habits and patterns within myself, in, um, like in, in my world and what I'm experiencing where I have high standards and where maybe my standards are not being met, my expectations are not being met. And like I said, some of that is personal and looking at myself where I'm not meeting my own standards and expectations in various areas of my life, but also looking at the people in my life and the relationships I have and looking at um, relationships that maybe have felt a little off or a little wonky or like investments I've made that are starting to feel not quite right and really looking at the underlying theme of all of those is that there's places and spaces within those that it's not meeting my standards and expectations. And what I've been struggling with personally is like, man, am I just being like a snobby bitch in some ways, right? Like, am I just being that, that type of person or woman in particular that has high standards that are unmeetable? Like, why do I have high standards and what do I actually expect? And I've been asking deeper questions of myself and what I came to realize is what I posted earlier today that I don't have high standards or expectations as a way of expecting everybody to be perfect. And it's not about you meeting my expectations and being the exact way that I think you should be. And it's not about um, like being absolutely perfect and it's not about being this little minion and it's not about a self-sabotage thing, right? Like I look at that with clients too sometimes. It's like sometimes we have these, uh, we like overshoot things as a way to self-sabotage, right? Like for instance, in the dating world, like a woman may have these totally um, really high expectations and standards, but they're coming from a place of like, I'm actually afraid to love, right? So I have these standards as my excuse to validate why I don't have a relationship when actually I need to look at this thing under the surface that says I'm actually afraid of being in a relationship. I'm afraid of receiving love. I don't know how to, right? So sometimes the high expectations and standards are a symptom that we can look at of like, you're setting yourself up for less than what you actually want, right? Because there's a fear or a, a limiting belief under the surface. And what I came to realize is that I have high standards and expectations out of, well, first and foremost, out of myself, also out of the, the friendships that I have and coaching relationships, mentorships, my marriage, my parenting, my kids, like I have high standards and expectations for each individual relationship and person, person because I truly believe that everyone can meet those. I have this like unending little flame that is inside me that is like, there is always more, there is always better. And everybody has the ability and the potential and the capability to go for better. And whatever that means for each individual person, each individual relationship, it can always be better and more and progressing and growing. Like we are living in a universe that literally is built on expansion, right? Big bang happened and we have been expanding ever since. If you want to look at that theory, right? So that's, that's where my high standards and expectations come are like, if you can do better, do better. If you can do more, do more right so i want to give the example and talk about specifically in the sports world but you can see how this is relevant everywhere right so prefacing this with sports of i want to say that like 
I totally get that there are training days when we're like, oh, you operate at 85%, right? You lift 85%, you're running at 85%, you're operating at, you know, at a practice level of a, of a certain percentage, not necessarily going full bore balls to the wall, right? And that's not, but so I, I get that, but even within that, how do you raise the standards? How do you continue to progress and go for better? How do you change an industry change the standards and expectations out of an industry or out of your own personal life it's by if you can do more you do more so there's this thing that i was listening to the other day about it there was an interview this comes this topic came to me out of like twofold right it's my own personal stuff but also there's these two other parts that brought this to the forefront that I was listening to an interview um, on the Red, Red, Red and White Authority, uh, which is a podcast about the Detroit Red Wings. And they were interviewing Scotty Bowman, um, who, fantastic coach for the Red Wings, fantastic coach all around. And I, I honestly don't remember a whole lot of the interview, but I remember this little line that stood out to me that was like, you know, when you're in the playoffs, you're playing like there's no tomorrow. And that little phrase, like, it stuck with me. Like, there is no tomorrow. Like, and I was like, what? Like, why is this, like, standing out to me, right? And then the second piece of this that, like, really brought this forward was, and they come together as I started a new, I bought a little, uh, like, six-week trainer um, from Ashley Horner doing some of her ab work to really work on my core. And there's this line in there where she's like, she shares this story of I was doing, I was supposed to do 15 reps, right? And I did 13 and I was going to stop. And I was like, man, I'm like, like I'm beat. I'm done. I can only do 13. I have maxed out. She's like, and I stood there and I realized that like those two reps may not be about like getting more gains, right? Building more muscle. She's like two more squats aren't going to make a massive difference in my overall results. But those two more squats are monumental in my mentality in my mental state, in my mindset, in my mental strength, those two reps mean everything. Because what's two reps? Like I've already done 13, I can do two more. But how many of you in this moment are like, no, but sometimes you really, like you do, you can't do anymore. It's like, yeah, but if you're doing a set of 15 and you're setting the weights right, you should be able to push out two more. And I was thinking about this, I was running the other day. It was like I did, I was doing laps around our little uh, circle street here and I got to like three or something or like five. I don't remember how many I did. And I was like, I had said I wanted to do two more and I got to like three, let's say, and I was like, what's two more? I can do two more. I am totally capable of doing two more. We talk about this a lot in the gym, how like when you're with a trainer, they're going to push you to do a little bit more. You're more likely to stop yourself short when you're, when you don't have that accountability, when you don't have somebody, right? Because it's all about your mental state. Your mindset has to be the thing that pushes you a little bit further. So in the sports industry, this comment about you know, in the playoffs, playoff hockey is different. Playoff basketball is different. Like playoff, like if somebody's playing in the playoffs, it's a different level of play. And I find, I've talked about this before even um, somewhere in my live streams, probably over the past year, that it's like, if you get to the playoffs and you can play that way, why didn't you play that way during the regular season? Even if you have a day where you're like, we're operating at 85% today, then do 85 fucking percent. Don't operate at 80% because you tell yourself, oh, it's, it, I'm, you know, it's a less day. Like how you raise the standard by telling yourself and teaching yourself that if I can do more, I do more. I need to do what I said I was going to do. I need to operate at that level all the time. So what would happen in the sports industry in particular? And if you're struggling to like translate this example to to another area of your life. Like if you, you get what I'm talking about with sports, but it's like not clicking for how do I do that in a relationship or with money or whatever, like send me a message and we'll talk about it. Cause translating it is what's powerful for, for us when we can start to translate it from one area of life to another. So in sports in particular, think about what would happen if all regular season, if every game, this team showed up and played at a playoff level. What if they showed up every game and played what they could because they could not because they had like they didn't do just what they had to to beat this team they didn't 
right? It's more of like, if you showed up to that game, playing your game, playing your best, giving it all, leaving it on the floor, and yes, recovery is appropriate. There's probably, in hockey in particular, what comes to mind is like, if you're giving it all, every game, and every training you show up and do the training to the best of your ability because you can and you leave it all on the mat. Like there's going to be in hockey in particular, it's like there's going to be less need to be on the ice. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but like hockey players are on the ice all the fucking time. Like they have like morning skates the day of a game and then they go to the game that night and then they have skate the next day. Like they're on the ice a ridiculous amount of time. And it's like if they trained at 100 percent doing what they could do to like to the best of their abilities, like i.e. if you have two more reps, do the two more reps. If you can do better, do better. If you can do more, do more. And you go into the game with that mentality and you go into every game with that mentality. That raises the standard to a completely new level. Cause think about it, you've got a team that they come out of the gates like a bat out of hell. Or I learned it in Britain, it's like they tore out, it's like hell for leather or whatever it is, uh, right? That they like came out roaring and they were able to consistently show up that way because that's now the standard right this is why the patriots had such a wicked run in football because they have a culture of excellence and high standards same concept they show up because they can because they do and they do it consistently because that is now the standard it's not coming into it as like oh that was an exception now we've got to level out because you got to save it up for the rest of the season bullshit what are you afraid of you have so much more in you so much more that you are capable of i gotta save it for a rainy day i gotta hold it like hold back a little because i have three more games this week bullshit what if you showed up and you did what you needed to do at that game at 100 percent and you gave it all and then you recovered at 100 percent and you recovered hard and intentional and you did that right and your nutrition is at 100 percent your relationships at 100 percent you're doing all that you can do consistently what happens you quantum leap you get better and better and better and better but what we see is like when somebody when a team like shows up and they start to play their heart out and they start to crush it they start to get like criticized right that they're like oh why are they going so hard now we've got a long season oh why like they're just they're not going to be able to maintain that i don't think they're going to be able to maintain that and continue that through the rest of the season why not if you have a team that raises the standard that way and they show up and they continue to just meet that standard alone, the standard they have set for themselves alone, it's not even about how the other teams do. If you show up to that level and you raise that standard to that level, you meet that standard and expectation for yourself because that's who you are now, that forces every other team to kick it up a notch. That's how you change an industry because I'm going to show up and do all that I can do every time that I show up giving 100% and what that really means is continuing to meet my high standards and expectations and I'm going to continue to do that and I'm going to continue to recover and grow at that level which means everybody else sure as shit is going to have to catch up to me catch up to this team that's how you raise the standard you set your standard high and you show up for that every single time and you do it consistently because that is now the standard. That's not an exception. That's not a really great game, like awesome, I hope you can repeat it. That's a this is what I expect and this is what I get, right? So when you've got a team that's gonna do that and they continue to do that, now all of a sudden you've got every team showing up at a higher level, showing up at a higher level of play, starting to demand more of themselves, demand more of recovery, demand more of the mental and emotional support and help that, that players really need, that we all need. And then you get to the playoffs and it's like, dude, I know the energy is different in playoffs, so now you're gonna bump it up even more because it is playoffs, because it is a little bit different, because the energy is a little bit more intense, because playoff season is different than regular season. But how much better is that going to be because you were already playing at last year's playoff level for this entire season? That's raising the standard. And what's possible when one person raises the standard and they make it their standard. This isn't just a, well, I'm going to try it. Well, I'm just going to go for it. It's like, this is my expectation. You continue to do it. And yes, there will be people that will criticize you 
the the it, like analogy that comes to mind is like in the stereotypical like office environment that's like you've got the guy who's doing a really great job and ahead of everyone and doing everything really well doing thing turning in things really quickly and you've got the other like group of employees t talking around the water cooler and they come over and they're like yo bro you gotta slow down you're making us all look bad it's like fuck you I'm doing my very best. You're making yourself look bad by not rising up and doing more. Like, cause you can, we all can. It's absolutely possible. We all can. The way the sports industry in particular has changed and the way people that are performing and peak performance and what's available, our knowledge about recovery, our knowledge about mental support and how that impacts the game, emotional support and how that really impacts our performance, which there's a whole nother live video coming about that particular connection. But like it has changed and it has improved. How much more can we go? There's no ceiling. There is no ceiling. There's not, it doesn't exist. What our potential is and what is available to every single human being in every area of our lives is truly limitless. We are the ones that put it on a cap and we think, well, I can only go that far. And that's what we've been conditioned to do. That's what we've been taught. That's what's actually like programmed in our DNA until you get someone that gives you social permission to do it differently. So this video right here is your social permission to do something differently, to go for more because you can, to go for better because you can, and to continue to expect that of yourself. And I wanna reiterate, this isn't about being perfect. This is not about having a like 100% winning record in everything that you're doing. This is about setting that standard and expectation at a level that says I'm demanding of myself all that I'm truly capable of. And when I make mistakes and when I learn and I'm like, I'm going for it, which means you're going to make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you acknowledge them and you learn from them and you correct them. Like that's the high expectation and standard that I have. Working through that, the self responsibility piece of like, shoot, man, that was not good. All right, yeah, I, I messed that up. Cool, let me fix that, let me learn from that. Let me actually grow. That's high standards and expectations that I'm talking about. Like this is a part of it. If you're going at 100%, you're going to make mistakes. If you're setting your standards and expectations at where your true potential is to be and you are maintaining it because it is your standard, you will make mistakes, you will trip, you will slip up. And that's the beautiful thing, you're supposed to. If you're not making mistakes, you are playing it safe and you are playing so small and you are staying underneath your potential by a huge chunk. If you're not screwing it up, if you're not tripping over things, if you're not triggering yourself on things, if you're not triggering other people with things, like you're playing too safe, you're going too small. So you wanna go better, you want your team to win, you want your industry and your business to grow and expand, you want your relationships to be better than ever before, you change the standard. You change what is expected and you yourself have to meet those. It's not, it doesn't work if you have a coach that says, I expect you guys to do this, but I'm not going to. That doesn't work. That will not fly, especially where the world is changing to now. That is not gonna fly. Leadership is completely changing. Coaching is completely changing in what is expected and allowed and what we really desire and what's gonna support us into this new normal that's starting to unfold and we're starting to like really start to see. So, it's about raising the standard, raising the expectations you have for yourself and for the rest of your, your team, your family, relationships, whatever, being willing to walk away when it's not aligned, just knowing it's not aligned. It, it's not about the other person. I talked about that the other day, I think on my personal page about how it's not about the other person. There's nothing against that person, right? Let's say you've got a relationship that like the standards just aren't being met. Like it's not what you truly desire. That's enough, period. It's not about, well, this person is shitty, this person sucks, he's a liar, he's not trustworthy, or whatever it may be. It's that this isn't aligned for me. So being willing to step away from those things because what is aligned will come into you. What is available will come into you. So keeping the, the standards where they need to be because that's what's available. It's, you can do two more reps because you can do two more reps. You absolutely can. It's a mental thing. Your mental state gives out before your physical state all the time. And the same thing goes for recovery. It's not about just going, uh, there's a motorcycle. It's not about just go physically doing and going balls to the wall and burning yourself out. I'm also talking about 100% and high standards for recovery, for sleep, for 
self-care, for mindfulness, for emotional support, like 100% in every area because burnout isn't necessary. Burnout is not a part of high standards. Constant injuries, not about high standards. That's an indication that shit's going wrong and there's a lot of stuff under the surface to deal with. Like physical injuries are a part of, of those symptoms that show up when things are not working right, when something does need to be shifted and changed. D injuries, diseases, illnesses, it's all an indication of things not being aligned in, under the surface. So again, there's another live video coming about those at some point. So. Raise the bar, raise the standard because you can. You absolutely can. Have the high standards and expectations. Keep yourself in check about like, is this true for me? Is this what I actually desire to experience? Or am I just picking this standard because I think I should, because it feels like it's high enough, because I think I need to, because I really don't think that I can, so that's gonna be my excuse for why I'm staying small. Right, keep yourself in check in evaluating your standards and expectations of yourself and of others and of different areas of your life. But raise the standard because you absolutely fucking can. And the more that you continue to do that, the this is how life gets better and better and better and better and better. And it absolutely is available to be that for everyone, even in the middle of everything that's going on in our country. And quite honestly, this is what's being asked. We're being asked to do better in a whole lot of different areas this year, do better. We're finding where, where shit is not good. All of that is bubbling to the surface. We're being asked as a collective, as a human species, as a white, as the white race in countries, as the, uh, as like communities, as police force, as uh, sports industries, like everything. We are being asked to do better, to be better, to raise the standards because we have let ourselves become lazy less than potential pains in the asses, to be honest. Like, we're a pain in the ass as a human race. We can absolutely do better. It is available for all of us. We are all very capable of it. What that looks like specifically is different for every person, different for every team, different for every coach, different for every leader and relationship. The specifics of that are gonna be relevant for each person, which is why when I'm working with clients, it's always personalized and customized. There is no cookie cutter approach to life. There cannot be, it's not possible. Every single person is a unique individual with their own filter, their own trauma, their own triggers, their own conditioning, their own experiences. Every single one of us is different. Even twins are different from each other. Overlaps may be bigger in that case about things that are similar, but they are very different. Everyone has their own different stuff. So you can't go through programs and coaching and approaches that are cookie cutter, that are just like one size fits all, that are here's a script, here's how you do it. It's not gonna work. That's why the EMP apprenticeship program is the way that it is with only four people in the class this year because it's gotta be personalized. It's gotta be customized for them to be able to step into their purpose, do it their way to show up and serve how they serve, to support their clients, patients, and players way better. And it's like a, such a potent, powerful way that's unique for them. And yes, I have like basic tools, structures for back office business things in place, but everything is customizable for each person to be their unique selves, to have their level of standards and excellence and expectations met completely every single time and to continue to be better and better and better. Make sense? This is about being better. This is about doing better. It's absolutely available. And if you have the standard and you make it a standard, you make it the expectation, you make it the culture that is built within yourself and your family and your business and your team, like the, there's only success in that. Every team right now has a culture and you can look at it. If you look at it from the outside, if you zoom out and you start to look at the teams, the families, the communities, look at the culture, look at what's expected, look at how, what the status quo is, look at where I think, how think, what the patterns are and the habits are that exist in there of how they function. Look at those, be willing to look honestly and evaluate where can we do better. That's what's being asked of us in a very big scale. And in particular, I was talking today about sports, but because I want sports to come back really bad <laughs> and they're slowly starting to, but, that's that's true for every area of life cool cool so intensives are open for next month we have two july 19th and july 20th 
um, are the two that are available if you're looking for like the more personalized approach to resetting your year really I think on the website I think it says uh, on the page for the intensive something about like cracking open your your heart and, and opening your soul or something like that so that's really what it's about is finding your your new level finding your your new space and resetting and finding a way to really get your footing again to to excel the rest of this year and beyond uh, that's what those are for and the apprenticeship starts in August there are we're only taking four people into the apprenticeship program and becoming EMP practitioners one is already spoken for and taken so there's only three that are left uh, that starts with a four-day in-person immersion event um, lots of teaching diving deep personalized coaching and support and then it's four months of apprenticeship where we're teaching more tools and, and tips but also allowing you to start working with clients and doing what you do um, which is serving others and continuing to support you with continuing education, continuing mentorship, coaching um, for personal stuff too, because ultimately what you're going through personally is gonna impact how you're able to support up and, and show up and support your, your clients and uh, patients and players. So all of that stuff is on the website, elitementalperformance.com. If you've got questions, I'm always available on social media or through email, you can reach out and ask them. Um, I highly recommend that if you are looking for a way to like figure out what the fuck to do with the rest of the year, looking at what's coming the rest of this year and next year, um, really looking to gain some footing again to reset a little bit. Those intensives um, are, man, they're like fucking priceless. I love doing them. I haven't done one in a couple of years. I'm excited to bring those back to the forefront of what I'm offering personally to work with people. And the apprenticeship is great for if you're an existing coach or a new one even, um, or counselor or practitioner in some way, and you're looking to add to your abilities to support really powerful, potent transformations for your clients, fully support them mentally, emotionally, physically, um, and really be able to have the tools and the training to combine emotional coaching or emotional clearing and transformational coaching together uh, to create that type of transformation and full support for your clients. Um, but also what's really different about the EMP apprenticeship is that at the end you're working as an independent contractor for EMP. So I'm taking care of all the like back office business shit. So you literally just get to show up and do what you do and get paid for it. Like what's better than that, you know? So if you desire to be an entrepreneur, but you don't want to mess with all the business back office system structures, things, this is kind of the great way to, to do that as well as being a part of a program that's going to continue to mentor coach and continuing education training to support you in continuing to grow because I have high standards and expectations so like I said if you've got questions if you're interested you can check out the website elitementalperformance.com or you can send me a message I'm happy to chat with you about it and figure out if it's right or not I highly recommend that if you're feeling a little like oh that's kind of cool like talk about it and get a definite yes or a definite no that's really the only way to go about it. So uh, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Be fierce about who you are and what you desire and embrace your truth. See ya.